Let's look at the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1. The way people respond, the way people respond at times of adversity. The way people respond at changing times determines their capacity to survive it. Is somebody following me? How do you respond? Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, verse 2, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I have what? I have told you. And so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in Esther, verse 4. And the Bible says, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day walk. Then he cried out and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Praise God. Verse 4. And the Bible, so the people of Nineveh believed God. Did you see that? The people of Nineveh did what? Believe God, proclaim the fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. You know, I'm just praying that Nigerians, that the church, that we can react like who? Like Nineveh. The people of Nineveh did what Joel said, that any man who has come to such a time must do. Any man who has come to such a time, what was the man do? The man must believe God. You must listen to the proclamation and call a fast and put on what? Sackcloth. The Bible says from the greatest to what the least. So I was just praying, when will our governors, our president, let them start leading the fast. Are you following me? The Bible said the people of Nineveh. And the Bible said, the word came to the king of Nineveh. See his reaction. And he arose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. That is to say that if this can get to the government house, Nigeria shall be spared confidently. If the world powers can hear God, God will do something. And the Bible said, and it caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout where? Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his noble saying, let neither man nor beast nor head taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. You know, I'm just praying that, you know, but you see, when COVID was hitting Italy, their president began to look for God. I don't know whether they are waiting to get to that point before the government. Because as long as their science is working, they'll still be trying. Are you getting me? But I have seen it here that they move towards God. And where we are going to, we bring the government to bow to God. I, I, is somebody following me? It will bring the government to bow to. Because they will be faced with what they cannot do. But they can come to God only when there are prophets like Daniel. Men who hear God again. Because there must be somebody that will interpret the times. Men like Moses. People who can go in and tell Pharaoh what God say. And there will be proof and signs and wonder that God is in it. Is somebody following me? Then the government can listen. Verse 9. But we are looking at a different thing. Let every man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. And it makes me really, you know, I'm convinced that in this country, nothing much will happen no, until we get to this point. Until we do what? We get to the point where people will need God and people will start to turn away from violence. And that is where we are heading to. Who can tell if God will turn and relent? And turn away his fierce anger so that we may not perish. This is the question. Let's look at that scripture. Who can tell? Who can tell? This is the character of God. Every time people sin and God confronts them with their iniquity. If the people will turn to God, God will relent. God will turn away from his anger so that we may not what? Perish. If we don't perish, somebody must go and tell them. Is somebody paying attention? If we are not going to perish, okay, when the gates goes, your man. If Jonah did not go on the street of Nineveh, we Nineveh have repented. Anything that is needed in this generation now are evangelists. This generation need men and women that will get to the hospitals, get to schools, get on the streets, go on morning cry. Again, to wake up sinners and remind them of the times we are. Is somebody paying attention? It is a matter of what? SOS. It is critical. Because if no one is sent, who will go? If no one tells them, how will they hear? More than any anointing, more than any cry, 
We need somebody to go and speak to the lost. We need somebody to bring the good news, to tell people about the nature of God so that the wicked will repent. When we see the locusts, we see the swarming, um, the, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, when we begin to see lines and line up of the kind of situation we are seeing today, it is time for people to go and talk again about God. The Bible said, then God saw their words, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he has said he will bring upon them, and he did not do it. So is it possible that yes, God will not do it? Yes. But the condition for God to relent from his judgment is when he seeks our works. God is still watching our works. God is watching the way we are reacting, the way we are responding. God is watching to see how did they respond. When COVID came, I showed them mercy. How many of them were even happy or grateful for how I have kept them? In the midst of all that we are passing to, God is watching. How are we grateful? How are we responding? Is this driving us on our knees to God? Or is it driving us away from God? Or are we still driving after our rest and our comfort? Or is it beginning to challenge us to know that the days that we are are unusual times? Because when you're singing in here, my column, I'm telling you, that person is deceiving himself. These times are not usual. We are in an abnormal time. The narratives have changed. The way things were narrated are not the same. And I'll soon get back to that. So it pleased Jonah. It displeased Jonah exceedingly. He became what? Angry. Let me leave it there. Why? Because Jonah felt, now, John didn't Kali. And was like, God destroyed him. Like some of us feel about Nigeria. Some of us look at what is happening in Nigeria. Some of the things that we are chasing is like chasing air. What really matter and what should matter to us at this time that we are facing now is eternity. If there's anything to matter, if there's anything that I can tell you that is tangible is the word of God. Because that is the only thing that cannot collapse in your hands. If there is anything you can be sure of is everlasting life, it is real. If there's anything that you are sure of, there shall be what? judgment heaven is real hell is real if there's anything that matters we are coming from somewhere we are going to somewhere if there is anything that is tangible you can be sure of it is the reality of the life we live now that every person will now think around it after you have thought around it you make up your mind and decide it from now no matter what happens i shall make it can i hear your amen can i hear your amen whether it's ending up in rapture i shall not be left behind Anyhow they are planning it, there's no how I'm going to miss it. That's one thing I am sure. Of everything that we hear, of everything that we see, of everything we know, that's the only thing that is constant. Jonah believed by his own theology that a wicked nation should perish. But that was not the theology of God. That is not who God is. Today I want to tell us something about this, our God. We have a good God and a loving God. We have a God that is faithful. If we only end up talking about hell and acting as though God came to destroy mankind, then it means we have not represented him well. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. What is God's agenda for humanity? God's agenda for humanity was never for humanity to be destroyed. This is God's plan for every one of us who will believe in him today and who can hack into his voice and listen to him. The Bible had it and it's recorded from the same book of Jonah from chapter 4 from verse 2. And in this book, God began, as Jonah began to engage himself with God, he was angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh God, what was, what was not this that when I was still in my country, therefore I, I, I fled previously to Tatash. For I know that you are a gracious God and a merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, who who relent from doing harm. See, see what Jonah was saying there. Jonah was saying, God, you know, I never want to be your messenger. I never plan to go as you are sending me. Because I know that you don't have capacity for harm. God, I know you cannot destroy anybody. I know you are records. You don't like to destroy anything. 
Why? Because Joel had said so. I'll get there. You know something, God? I was on my way running away from you. Because you will bring me out to the street of Nineveh. People will see me. After passing the judgment, God, you will change. Nineveh will turn against me. This is who this God is. And he began to say, this is who you are, God. You are God that is gracious. Somebody, pay attention to me. We serve a God that is gracious. Our God is full of grace. I don't know how dry you are. I don't know how helpless or hopeless the situation can be. But our God is a gracious God. If you find him, you shall find grace. And the Lord also spoke into the spirits. And Jonah caught it and added, you are also merciful. Because everything about God shows mercy. He said, how thou, O God, are full of grace. Jonah said, why did I get caught up with you? Because you are so merciful. There is nobody, that is why today the man you are looking at, that you think that he is the man who is a kingpin, that is in charge of killing. Don't be surprised. He may just end up, maybe the day they are about to shoot him, he will give his life to Jesus. Like the one who was crucified with him, he said, by this time you will see me in paradise. Say to your neighbor, run your own track. Mind your own track. Because nobody can do this for God. God will save whom he will save. He will show mercy to whom he will show mercy to. Let's stop being religious. Let's stop comparing, judging and condemning. Because we don't know what, when and how God will encounter any man. Run your own track. Do all that is in your power to seek this living God. Because God is gracious and God is merciful. Say to your neighbor, God is gracious. Repeat to your neighbor, say, God is merciful. And as you speak that word, let it enter your own spirit. So that nobody here can be condemned. Or will allow anything to condemn you. Don't say because I've not been praying. Don't say because I've not been fasting. Don't say because I've not been reading my Bible. This time around, my own is over. I cannot connect back to God. It's a lie. It is not good to abandon the ways of God. But at the same time, remember that God is slow to anger. Jonah said to God, I know you, God, you are slow to anger. Who is it that is slow to anger? A person that is slow to anger is somebody that said, 70 times 7, Lamesh did that word of prophecy. Jesus confirmed it. Because God has given a 70 times 7 gap before his anger cannot be lifted. There is nothing that you have done that God cannot forgive you. God is slow to anger. You may think that God is angry with you. But I've come to tell you that that anger you are looking at, in the heart of God, he is not angry with you. Somebody, am I talking to you right now? You may think that God is angry and you think that God has condemned you. No, I'm here to remind you. God is slow to anger. God is slow to anger. I'm telling you this hour, God is not angry with you, child of God. God is not angry with you. It's just the devil lying to you so that you can be deceived and you can walk away from God. That's why when you want to know the nature of God so that you can relate better with God, take time and meditate on the word of God. So when you hear the word, the word will take root inside you. And then the Bible said, not only is he slow to anger, but he's full of abundance in his loving kindness. Psalm 51 said, against the God have I sinned and you have I done this evil? Why? David said, you are God who is full of loving kindness. Somebody need to get to the dictionary, to divine love, and then divine kindness and add it together. Then this is who God is. God is full of what? Loving kindness. And the Bible also added after that. And he actually is God that refrains from harming or hurting. He refrains from what? harming or hurting even when i have done something that i'm supposed to be punished for he's god who can stop that punishment now if i can repent now you know what god hates is hardness of heart what god hates are people who are who are just doing it wicked men and they continue and they don't repent that's what god hates that is the people that get to be punished but people whose heart is still tender towards god you can be rest assured today that if you cry unto the Lord, the Lord God Almighty shall show you mercy. Can I hear your amen? But when you continue and you are not ready to change, that is what God hates. If you continue and you don't change, that is when God gets to punish you. 
But if you can repent today, God Almighty shall show you mercy. I say, God Almighty shall show you mercy. I say, God Almighty shall show you what? Mercy in Jesus' name. And every one of us here, can I say to you that today is your day of mercy? Yes, I heard that. There's mercy on this altar today. No matter what you have done. There's mercy now. If you can forgive yourself, God has already forgiven you. If you can ask for mercy, you receive it now. Don't be condemned. God did not come to condemn anyone. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You Christians will come into the presence of God. The first thing we did was to give time to repentance. We confess our sin. We make peace before we begin to open our mouth to fight demons or to begin to ask God for help. But this time we just rush into the presence of God with our problems and we don't give time to search our hearts and our conscience. But I know that there is grace here today. And I, 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 could, I could just ask everybody, could you tell God to reveal to you? Just open up your heart and show you. Are there areas of your life that he is not pleased? The Bible says, confessing your sin to one another. A day like this will come out and will come into the presence of God and God begins to place a demand that our heart again will begin to because now more than a man might be, make them might be able to be able to go. When a man's heart has, that he doesn't even see what he's doing that is wrong, the person's eyes are closed. The person can no longer see. Eyes that no longer see. Ears that no longer hear. Hearts that have been severed. Why? Because we are after and we are in pursuit of many things that our heart is after. But my prayer in the course of this meeting is that. All those things that are cares, that we are chasing, that is all over the place. When our heart is overwhelmed with jealousy, envy, when we are filled with so much filth, filth, all manners of bad and evil thought, imaginations are clouded with negative things. It is time to stop. It's time to stop. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, We must not allow our mind and our thoughts 
to continue to run against God. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, that is what to think. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Some of us have allowed our mind to meditate on bad report. Bad report the doctor gave you. Bad report they gave you about your children. Bad report about your family. That we don't give time to meditate on the virtues of God. On the greatness and the mightiness of God. For the world to penetrate us and to enter us and stay long enough to make a change in our life. Then there must be that shift. There must be a shift in our mind. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And when we begin to meditate on what God is saying, the Bible said, the things which you learned and received and heard, and you saw in me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. Many people lack peace, because the things they think about is taking away their peace. But if you want your peace back, watch your mind. There are problems you cannot change, even if you continue thinking about them, it will not change them. Why not pray and hand them over to God? And allow your mind to be filled with the thoughts that are of God and not those thoughts that are negative. There is a promise of restoration despite and against all odds of condemnation. Let's go back to Joel chapter 2. We are going to see where Joel chapter 2 overlaps the word of God from the book of Jonah. And the Bible began to show us in the book of Joel chapter 2. I'm trusting God somehow we are going to get somewhere today. And we are expecting God to do. And what I expect him to do for us is to bring us to a place where we can represent God well. 